Over the past few months, we've seen price levels increase all across the board. Copper prices have almost doubled in the past 12 months. Oil prices have also doubled and even sugar is up almost 50% over the past 12 months. Not only that, but assets like stocks, cryptos and real estate are all up substantially year over year. Cathy Wood recently spoke up about how one asset in particular has been in a massive bubble and is actually on the verge of popping soon. In this video, I will cover what that asset class is and how this will impact the economy at large and the other asset classes. Welcome to Cathy's Academy. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more content like this and let's get right into it. Over the past 12 months, an interesting and unusual movement has occurred within the economy, which has fueled up a major bubble. Because of the pandemic, consumers have been spending money on goods rather than services, especially in the middle of the pandemic when services were shut down. Uh, what did the consumer spend on? Goods. Non-durable and durable goods. Because uh, those were the only uh, items that consumers uh, could spend anything on. Um, uh, services were pretty much uh, shut down. Now, what's interesting about this is goods make up uh, only, well, actually less than a third of all consumer spending. Services make up the rest. So for the past year, the consumer, pre-vaccination especially, uh, was focusing his or her spending on goods, just a third of a typical budget. And consumer spending uh, rose as a share of total spending uh, to more than 40%. Uh, I don't think it's been that high in the United States in quite some time. Uh, as a result, we believe that consumers have actually been building inventories themselves at home. In a typical consumer market basket, commodities make up around one third of overall consumer spending. Over the past year, however, this type of spending has passed over 41% of the basket. Cathy Wood foresees that this is not sustainable and that after a few months, spending in this category will drop below 30%. So in other words, businesses will be left holding the bag as they will have massive inventory with not as much expected demand. Essentially, most of us have already spent money on items like computers, air conditioners, and washing machines. As a result, we don't need to purchase a new computer, a new AC, or a new washing machine. We've already stocked up on those items. Now, more and more consumers are purchasing services while spending on goods is decreasing. However, since spending on goods hasn't decreased much yet, the price level for goods has increased because businesses cannot meet the high demand from consumers. This has led businesses to order plenty of materials for their supply chains, which ultimately leads raw material prices to increase. As I covered earlier, raw materials are exploding in value, with lumber prices almost up fourfold. Unbeknownst to the businesses that have been panicking to meet the high consumer demand, consumer demand for goods is starting to dwindle. This is because as vaccinations continue to roll out, consumers are spending more and more money on the services that are opening up, including eating outside, traveling to meet friends, and going on vacation. This is all about to tie together and result in very serious implications that I'll soon cover. Now, what we think is also happening is that businesses are still scrambling, trying to catch up. Inventories relative to sales are at a record low. And as a result, uh, the, the businesses are losing sales and they become a bit panicked about it. Uh, and so the scramble continues. And usually when, when I hear panic and scramble, it, it means uh, double ordering, triple ordering to make sure uh, to get those supplies so that they won't lose sales in the future. Meanwhile, the consumer has, has already shifted to services. If, if you look at retail sales in, um, in, in uh, April, uh, they were flat. They were expected to be up 1%. Now, they had had uh, uh, the prior month a huge increase, 10.7%. But nonetheless, uh, a surprise relative to expectations. The problem with our current situation is that businesses that sell goods have ordered too many materials. However, because consumers already stocked up on goods and are now spending on services, the businesses that sell goods will have to cancel a significant amount of their orders on the materials needed for their supply chains. After these cancellations occur, commodity prices are going to collapse, which definitely has huge implications for other asset classes like stocks and real estate. By the way, this isn't just something Cathy is predicting. 
The data that recently came out about consumer spending directly supports her theory. Uh, if you look at real consumption in April, it was down slightly. But if you look at real goods consumption in April, uh, it was down 1.3 percent. Now this makes sense because if you look at the past year,、uh, real goods consumption increased 74 percent. Think about that. In the last year, the consumption of durables has increased 74 percent. Uh, and so now that the consumer is filled up on durables and I'm sure non-durable goods as well,、uh, the spending towards、uh, services has begun, and we did see、uh, services consumption up 0.6 percent、uh, that month. The result of this entire situation is a fast decline in commodities. Businesses ordering massive amounts of materials have fueled the commodity bubble. And now, all of a sudden, after these cancellations, the price of commodities is going to collapse. Kathy Wood likens this event to the cartoon Wile E. Coyote falling off a cliff because commodity prices are practically going to fall off a cliff. Businesses, I mean, this is going to be like Wile E. Coyote. Businesses are scrambling, scrambling, scrambling to catch up to the consumer, but the consumer's left. So Wile E. Coyote's off the cliff, and I think we're going to see a pretty serious drop in commodity、uh, prices. We have already started to see some of these.、Uh, copper price、uh, peaked at four dollars and ninety cents, is down to roughly four fifty. Uh, we're seeing lumber prices. They peaked at one thousand seven hundred and eleven dollars per、uh, whatever the metric is,、uh, random sheaths or something like that.、Uh, now down to got as low as twelve hundred. So seventeen eleven to twelve hundred、uh, is quite the drop.、Um, right now, hovering、uh, a little below thirteen hundred. So now that we know that there's likely going to be a crash in commodity prices. You might be wondering how this impacts other asset classes that you might be invested in, such as stocks and real estate. First of all, if commodity prices drop, then that serves as a deflationary force, as the price of goods will fall with commodities. As a result, inflation won't be as high as expected. Kathy is already seeing investors predict this right now, as bond yields are going down at the moment, which means that investors aren't as scared of inflation as you might think. One other、um, indicator, very important to us, is beginning to confirm that this might be a little bit more real、uh, than the skeptics would suggest. The Treasury bond yield has dropped、uh, from 1.75 percent. This is the 10-year Treasury bond, so、uh, 1.75 percent to、uh, 1.55 percent. And today we got the wages higher than expected. We've seen inflation indicators higher than expected, as I just mentioned, and yet the bond yield is going down. So inflation indicators are higher than expected right now, but bond yields are going down, which contradicts that. This is signaling how investors expect inflation to actually be lower than expected as commodity prices fall. The bond market is definitely something that all investors should watch, as it shows clues about what's coming. For example. Every recession had an inverted yield curve in the bond market before the recession actually happened. In fact, in 2006, the bond market predicted that energy prices were going to soar.、Uh, this reminds me much,、uh, a lot of uh, 2006. Uh, the bond market got that one right as well. Energy prices soared from、uh, 2006. I think they were at sixty、um, dollars, all the way to a hundred and forty dollars. In the spring of '08, even though the writing about housing was on the wall, maybe it wasn't on the wall in 2006, but that's when the bond market began to see it. Uh, so uh, we believe that the bond market is recognizing here、uh, that inflation is not a problem, and、uh, and that growth may slow down. As of right now, the rise in commodity prices and inflation has led value stocks like energy and financial-related stocks to rise significantly in value in the short term. During this time, as I'm sure many of you have seen, Tesla and other growth-oriented stocks have fallen substantially. However, as commodity prices crash and inflation comes in lower than expected, growth stocks could take off due to lower interest rates. Not only that, but value-oriented stocks have increased due to short-term recovery growth rates. But as recovery spending dwindles down, these value stocks suddenly won't be attractive as growth stocks that are growing much faster. 
uh, as we've been saying for quite some time, that the bull market is alive and well, and it is broadening towards value uh, and cyclical sectors. Uh, or maybe I should say it has broadened. This has happened, and we thought it would, and we thought it would hurt innovation-oriented strategies. It has done that as well. Now, if we're right, and everything I just um, suggested based on the evidence we're seeing occurs, then these cyclical sectors are setting up uh, for a fall. And that should accrue to the benefit of uh, innovation. Just like Kathy Wood, I strongly believe that our current times are a great opportunity to continue investing for the long term. On Patreon, you'll be able to see how I navigate the market in real time. Patreon is where I share my buy and sell alerts, my brand new $25,000 portfolio, which I have a goal of reaching $100,000, my main stock portfolio, my watch list, stock market updates, and valuation spreadsheets. If you're interested in growing your portfolio alongside mine, or if you're just curious, check out my Patreon in the first link down below. With that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.